This is the first lesson on Core 3 Numerical Methods. Have a look at the function up here and try and solve for when f of x equals 0. OK. Did you get any of those solutions? Quite a difficult one, isn't it? Without using the calculator, using the equation solver or G-solve or whatever, we can normally solve quadratics, maybe even cubics, but trying to find values for x when f of x is 0, when we've got a quintic equation like this, is quite a tricky one. What we're going to look at this lesson is a method called sign change, which we use to approximate solutions to difficult equations. Sometimes we get equations we can't solve, but we can find approximate solutions. Sometimes the approximations are perfectly accurate enough for our purposes. So as I said, in Core 3 we have several numerical methods like this. We're going to learn first about using integer bounds. This is how it works. First thing we need is an estimate. We then find a formula to improve the estimate. Sometimes it's easy to spot an approximate solution. For example, if we've got this equation here, you can see numbers close to there. For example, if we choose 0 as x, we're not that far away, are we? We'd get 0 on the left and 1 on the right. So what we need are some bounds. We need two numbers either side of the correct solution. A little bit like trial and improvement that we did at GCSE, where if the number's too small, we go bigger, or if the number's too big, we go smaller. So bounds are numbers which lie either side of the solution. And this lesson we're going to look at integer bounds. In other words, two numbers, two integers, where the solution lies in between them. Or a solution lies in between them. If we sketch the graphs of these two functions, y equals root x and y equals 1 minus x cubed, this is what we get. And we can see here that we have a solution just here. We can see from the graph roughly what that solution is. And we can see that it lies between 0 and 1. So the solution we're looking for is the value of x here that gives us that point of intersection. So for this, we can say that 0 and 1 are integer bounds. We usually call the solution alpha. So we say that alpha lies between 0 and 1. 0 is less than alpha, which is less than 1. For our first approximation, we just pick any number between 0 and 1. Say 0 0.5 is a sensible estimate. So this is an algebraic method. What we do is we rearrange the equation so that we get it equal to zero. So for this one, where we've got root x equals 1 minus x cubed, we get x cubed minus 1 plus root x equals zero. In other words, f of x equals zero. And we can see here the point where the two equations met the x value is actually now the point where we get y equals 0. That's our alpha value. 
If we look at the values of y where x is 0, we see it's minus 1. And where x is 1, we see the value there is 1, which is obviously first one less than 0, second one greater than 0. So what we now see say is because the signs have changed, it means it must go through 0. Therefore, we have a solution between 0 and 1, between those integer bounds. So if we want to show that 0 and 1 are integer bounds, we show that f of x has different signs at 0 and 1. 0 and 1. And there we see the whole process. The change of sign confirms the fact that there is a solution for alpha between 0 and 1. If we wanted to find bounds accurate to one decimal place, we use what we call a decimal search. We could use f of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, looking for a change of sign. As soon as we got a change of sign between any two consecutive decimals, then we would say that the decimal solution lies there. For example, here, here, we can see that we're actually trying to find a solution to three decimal places. So we need a much higher degree of accuracy. We don't need integer bounds. What do you think the two bounds will be? Try and work them out for yourself. What value should we choose for A and for B? If we're trying to prove that this is our answer to two. If alpha equals 1.657 to three decimal places, then we know that alpha must lie between 1.6565. Anything less than that would round down to 1.656, wouldn't it? But anything from there upwards would round up to this. And then the other side Now this would actually round up, wouldn't it? But anything below it, even infinitesimally smallly below it, would round down. So we actually call that the upper bound. If it lands exactly on for alpha and we get the answer zero, then we know that it's a, it's a solution. So what we're looking for now is a change of sign between these two points to show there's a solution between them. And both of these will give us the extremes of what rounds to 1.657. So for the first one here, we get minus 0.02023. And then for the second one, we get 0.0348. And we can see here that we do get a change of sign. So the answer is yes. We could write it out in full sign change. And that gives us the fact that 1.6565 is less than alpha, is less than 1.6575. Therefore, alpha equals 1.6572 3dp. 
OK, your turn now. Have a go at this one yourselves. If you manage to get the answers right, then clearly you're ready to move on. OK, so this is what you should have got. You can see here that this is the lower bound that would round up to 1.629 to three decimal places. This is the upper bound. Anything slightly smaller than this would round down to 1.629. And then you've got a change of sign. So we can say that alpha lies between these two points.